Hello everybody, it's me Ross and welcome to the recap. This week I'm joined by Bono, aka Vu from U2, aka good old Matt, to talk about the goalless draw with Pompey and his five takeaways from the game at Portman Road. Bono, thank you very much for joining me. Let's bring up your first takeaway and no cutting edge, unfortunately, for town. Another goalless draw, expand. Yeah, well, hi Ross, thanks for having me. Um... Yeah, cutting edge or, or lack thereof. Of course, Saturday's um, shutout, as our North American friends would call it, was our third of the season. And um, again, we're well on top in terms of stats and shots and goal and corners and, and all that jazz. But sadly, no goals. And and very much like the Cheltenham game, you know, we, we pretty much, for the most part, bossed it. Um, we just... We just couldn't get that breakthrough. Um, obviously, there's the slightly controversial disallowed goal, um, which came from the free kick on the far side. And, you know, we've, we've already seen some really good analysis of, of the offside rule and the interpretation of that. And, you know, should Bon have touched it? Shouldn't he have? You know, as a striker, that's his instinct at the end of the day. Um, you know, where I sit, in the U2, in the corner of the Cobbold, the linesman, or the lines, the assistant referee, as they're now called, pretty much put his flag up straight away. Um, so, you know, none of us went too mad in the corner there. But I just feel that, you know, the play and, and, and the style of play has improved so much. We just seem to have, in the last few weeks, certainly, you know, just the stats the stats tell a different picture and, and I'm always one to kind of be a little bit wary of of stats you know up until a few years ago xg and stuff like that was you know it wasn't it wasn't a thing was it um but on saturday I just think we just lacked that killer instinct obviously uh, Caden Jackson going off early doors it didn't help um bringing on a really lacking in confidence bond which is he's a, he's a kind of a, a shadow of the of the player that he was uh, at the start of the season somebody that we would love to kind of pick up that form at really the business end of the season i just think you know the next few games are obviously key um and yeah we just just lacking that that would be the the cherry on the cake would have would to be to be one of the uh one of the strikers being in form because I think everywhere else on the pitch at the moment we're we're kind of excelling and and far far more advanced than kind of where we were under the um, previous managership. So takeaway number two is got to be solid Cameron Burgess. He's set first start under McKenna. Um, of course, George Emerson could be out pretty much. I think probably for the rest of the season. But he did it right, didn't he? Yeah. Shout out to the uh, to the big man Cam the freezer. Burgess um it's quite it's it's quite funny really because obviously on um on the coffee club they often that they rip into him don't they the boys that are on there particularly the fridge kind of says oh he's he's boring and blah 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 but you know it's great whilst it's great that we've got these players with personality and 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 and, and all seem like really kind of stand-up guys at the end of the day all we care about really is is if they do the job on the football pitch and here McKenna's been talking about the positive influence that he's been having within the group. You know, we hear this kind of phrase, which I've not really heard before in football. You know, rather than squad and team, KMC kind of calls it the group. So he's having a positive impact in the group, in like um, the unit chats that they have and stuff like that. But he, see, he came on as a sub the other day in the week against Lincoln and he he, he he looked pretty decent. Obviously, the game that Edmondson plays is is often to get the ball and, and kind of run it out and kind of create space for the for the wing back and, and the centre midfielders in front of him. But Cab just did a great job. He's steady. He would, um, I think I heard somebody say that we maybe we should send him over to the Ukraine and he can start heading away, <laughs> heading away the Russian army. I, I, I think Kieran McKenna and all of us lot would prefer to keep him in Suffolk, but he just did a, a great job. He, he, he honestly did not look like a man that's not played for what getting on for three months but he's just dependable he does the easy stuff well and you know at times when he did have the ball at his feet um let's not forget that George Edmondson is a right footer on the left hand side of a back three and and that's always going to have a little bit of a I always think Fritz looks a, a, a tad bit kind of awkward but with Cam being a left footer on the left hand side of that back three he, he just looked natural and it's just so nice to be able to 
Now, how lucky are we to to be a team that's got almost a million pound centre back on the bench that's not played for what fifteen games or so? So the fact that we're able to bring bring him in from the start, he didn't look rusty. Of course, you know we all remember back to the start of the season where we had players that hadn't played for ages. They they, they took a good few games to get kind of used to it but he came in did really 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 well and obviously that also opens up the door for people like Elkan Bagger and Albi Armin to come in as well because obviously at the weekend we only had KVY on the bench defensively and you know you do you do kind of wonder if we're short but no great to see him well done Cam good to have you back in the team so takeaway three Bono it's got to be the pack out PR momentum and have a big crowd at Portman Road it was great to see Pompey of course brought a lot of fans as well so it just brought the atmosphere up and um, these pack up PR campaigns have been fantastic, and hopefully more fans will return the spot. Maybe the new one draw they saw. Definitely, I mean, obviously twenty five thousand or five hundred, um, which is bumped up, of course, by the nineteen hundred odd Pompey fans making their way up from from Hampshire, including the guy with the bell. We could we could kind of hear him in the corner of the cobble stands, but you know, it's this whole kind of. Since the pack out PR campaign, which is obviously interrupted by by the various COVID call offs and stuff like that, it's just so good to see that momentum carrying on. Um, I think the atmosphere for the last few home games, despite the numbers being being well above twenty thousand, it was still a little bit still a little bit flat at times, despite the best efforts of of the um, of the Sir Bobby Robson stand and certainly my little my little kingdom um, in the corner of the Cobbold. But it was just the, the atmosphere on Saturday was absolutely electric. You know, there was there was there was controversy. There was moments within the game where people were out of their seats. Um, I know that when I did that, when I spoke to people after the game, and and even now today, kind of two days later, my 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 throat is st- still a little bit hoarse. Let's say, but no, good to see twenty five thousand plus at Portman Road and if we can keep that momentum going to the end of the season also it's come at the right time of course for season ticket renewals um the deadline for that is March the 18th remember everybody I've already done mine so yeah it's just good to see not many empty seats at Portman Road for a change which is great so takeaway four is always got to be Kieran McKenna in it we always got to talk about him 15 games now for him nine clean sheets it's been a great start under him um the effect it's Kieran McKenna. Definitely. So, you know, I was I was sceptical. I think we all were when we when we w- were linked with him. And then when he was appointed, it was just like, OK, well, you know, we've 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 been down the hole, tried and tested and and proven track record. But what an effect this guy has had on the team. He is uh, he is intelligent. He is articulate. We've heard Mark Ashton say you know, rather graciously that he's he's very, very intelligent and got a very, very high IQ. And you can just tell by the way that we're playing now and the way that the team is set up that he, he is a thinker. And I've said this on the fan social as well. I kind of, I'm getting that vibe that we're kind of in the presence of greatness. And, you know, hopefully we can keep hold of him for as long as, as, long as possible. Of course, we haven't won anything yet. We haven't, you know, he hasn't had, a pre-season or any or or even kind of like a, a proper transfer window really and it's kind of mouth-watering to think of, of of what could happen in the future with like a full pre-season and and everything else like that but we just we are starting to ooze class just on and off the pitch as well and it's just the little things like seeing the club seeing the team on on match days coming in in the coach and we're kind of like he's starting to implement these little bits which have obviously been taken from his from his time at both Tottenham and and Manchester United over the years and we're just starting to instill this this kind of professional and you know I think I saw a meme once where somebody's wearing a Batman suit to a job interview and it's like don't job for the don't dress for the job that you've got dress for the job that you want and you know we're starting to we're starting to implement things that you know Premier League teams are doing and and it's I think it's little touches like that where if we if we don't go up which you know it's still kind of on a knife edge at the moment and if we don't reach the playoffs it's little things like that that I think will make players that might be linked elsewhere at the end of the season I think it might make them kind of want to hang around because if training's fun if, if the gaff is decent, if the routines are good and it's a good place to be, then 
people will want to stay and people will want to be a part of this project, which, you know, in, in Paul Cook's time, it was, we're all on board. We wanted it to do well, but now McKenna's come in and he started to implement these things. And with the backing of, 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 of Game Changer and with Mark Ashton, um, and of course, with these with these plans for the stadium that we've all seen that are currently in in consultation, the public consultation, which kind of I think ends kind of around about the same time as the regular season does, it's just what a place to be, Ipswich Town, kind of back from the brink. You know, the guys up the road not doing so well. Will our cro paths cross again? Who knows? But yeah, I think the Kieran McKenna effects is just is just absolutely fantastic, and um, yeah, we shall see. So the final takeaway, Matt, is, of course, a community day. It was the annual community day at town against Pompey. Um, and all a good day all round in the fan zone. It was fans all over the place, different things going on. And I think it's just great that we do have this day again. Absolutely. I mean, I, I think the way that our club is set up, I think every week is like community day. The amount of family and young kids. I know I'm, I'm taking my girls down again in a couple of weeks' time. But I think... Certainly, this season it's almost been noticeable the amount of the amount of young people, the amount of amount of female fans as well, and it's just so great that Portman Road is an opening and kind of inclusive place for anybody, you know, whoever you are, wherever you're from, to come down to Ipswich Town and to come down to Fortress Portman Road. But on Saturday, it was just fantastic. Um, what what are the side effects of community days? They give out lots of things and kind of in my section, there was those kind of blow up tube things. I don't know what they're called, but they were every time somebody threw one up in the air, there was a big way. So that that was that was quite cool. But it's just nice to see the club doing something like that. Of course, we were blessed with really, really fine weather beforehand. The fun of the fan zone was certainly looking really, really decent. And um, yeah, it was it was it was great. And um, yeah, roll on the next one. I know sometimes they do these at the start of the season, but I think kind of the stars aligned this weekend because obviously it's a huge, huge game. Twenty five thousand um, people. It's a game that really, really mattered. Obviously, we didn't quite get the three points that we that we really, really desired. But I think all of that put together as well, the, the, the Kieran McKenna effect as well. All of that kind of put together was just absolutely fantastic, and I think it was. I think the club should be proud of, proud of what what they're doing. Obviously, the, the club's output, social media, and and content wise, is 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 really really decent as well at the moment. So it's all like a, a nice little ripple effect that are kind of going to take us to the end of the season and the beginning of the next one. So yeah, all good. It is all good indeed. Um, hopefully on the pitch, shell. Bring that momentum that we're bringing as fans. Um, Bono, it's been a pleasure as ever to have you on the recap. Uh, get involved Thanks in the comments down below, your takeaways, all that sort of stuff. And I'm sure we'll be bringing you more videos throughout the week. So stay tuned and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.